an exam question walkthrough here for year 13 rates. So the question looks at using initial rates results to determine orders and rate equation, calculation of the rate constant k, the derivation of a two-step reaction mechanism, and the calculation of activation energy and the pre-exponential factor from an Arrhenius graph. Now, because there is a graph involved and you've got to draw the graph and then sort of manipulate it, not sure how easy that's going to be from a computer screen or phone screen. So if you've got access to a printer, I've, got, I've put the link to the question in the description. So you might want to print out the question and do it on the paper itself. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to leave a comment, maybe suggest a future topic that I can cover, that would be great. Okay, so here's the question. It's on two slides. So if you want to pause the video and then play on for the answers. Okay, so part A, we've got to determine the rate constant and a possible two-step mechanism for the reaction, which are consistent with the results. So we're going to use these initial rates uh, results to work out the orders with respect to each reactant. From that, we can get the rate equation. We can work out K, the rate constant, and then use all that for the mechanism. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at a pair of experiments where one reactant is held constant, the other one changes, and we can see the effect on the rate. So from experiments one and two, you can see that the I minus concentration is held at three times set to the minus two. So the I in three plus concentration has doubled, and so has the rate. So that means it's first order with respect to Fe3+. To get the order with respect to I-, minus, we're going to look at experiments 1 and 3 because the Fe3 plus is held at 4 times to the minus 2 moles per decimeter cubed and the initial rate has gone up 4 times. Sometimes it's not straightforward to see what the change in the rate has been so all you need to do is divide the bigger number by the smaller number to see how many times bigger it is. So the initial rate's gone up four times, and so that means it's second order with respect to I minus. So now we can draw the rate equation. So rate equals K, Fe3 plus in square brackets to the power one, I've just don't bother with the power, multiplied by I minus concentration to the power two. So we're going to rearrange that to solve for k. So k equals rate over the concentrations. Don't forget that square for the i minus. And then I'm just using row 1 or experiment 1. So I'm putting all the numbers in and I'm getting a value for k at 22.5. And the units, which you must include, dm6, multiple minus 2, seconds to the minus 1. I'll just quickly explain the units. So for the k expression, the units are those. So the rate units on the top and then all the concentration units on the bottom. Cancel what you can. So we're left with that, and then just tidying that up, taking that denominator up to the top, you basically flip the sign of the powers, and that's where that dm6 mol minus two s minus one comes from. If you've put moles to the minus two dm6 seconds to the minus one, that's fine, but conventionally we're supposed to write positive powers first. Okay, so the mechanism now, so the mechanism's linked to the rate equation and the terms in the rate equation tell us what's involved in the rate determinant step. So the rate determinant step must involve one mole of Fe3 plus because it's order one and two moles of I minus because it's second order. So the next thing we're going to write is the overall equation has to be that. So basically we need to fill in the blanks and come up with another step. So the way I've done it, now there's lots of ways to do it, so I'm just gonna go through the way I've done it. I've created this substance here, so Fe I2 one plus, and you've gotta make sure that all your atoms balance and your charge balances. So obviously Fe, Fe, two I's, I2, that's fine for atoms. The overall charge on this side, three plus and two minus leaves one plus, and that's why that needs that one plus charge. Now you'll notice that that doesn't feature in the overall equation, so we need to get rid of that. So we make that a reactant in the other step. We need another Fe3 plus, so that's gonna feature in the other step. 
and we obviously need to produce two Fe2 pluses and I2 because we haven't got them at all yet. So there's my other step. And you can see when you add them together, they're going to cancel out. There's more possible answers. I won't go through all the different possible answers, but basically the rule is that it's consistent with the rate equation. So everybody's rate determinant step has to look like that because of that rate equation. And the steps have to balance for mass and charge, like I explained for this one. And when you add the two steps together, you get the overall equation. So moving on to part B, it's obviously all linked to the Arrhenius equation. So there it is there, just to, we're going to be using that. It's on the data sheet, so you don't have to remember it. This version is the straight line equation. So we've got y is lin k, um, x is 1 over t. The gradient, so minus ea over r, is the gradient of the straight line. And lin a is the y-intercept. So we're going to be actually using both of those um, to answer parts 1 and 2 of b. Okay, so we've got to draw a best fit straight line. So I've gone for that. Obviously, there's going to be some variation in answers because um, straight lines can slightly differ. So I'll show you what the range, the accepted range on the mark scheme is when I put my answer on the screen. But that's what I've gone for. So we need to calculate the gradient of this straight line. So we need to know the change in y and the change in x. So my change in y is 4.2. My change in x is 5 times 10 to the minus 3. So change in y over change in x gives me a gradient of negative, because it's sloping down, 840. So the accepted range for the gradient was between 800 and 1040. So hopefully, if you've managed to draw the graph, you've got somewhere between that range. Obviously, that's going to have a knock-on effect in the rest of your calculations, but I'll keep showing you the allowed values. So, we now need to use that to calculate a value for EA. So, the gradient is minus EA over R. So, obviously, gradient times R, the gas constant, is minus EA. So, let's put the numbers in now. So, that minus 840 multiplied by the gas constant equals minus EA. I'm going to lose those minus signs now. And we get EA is 6983.76. That's what I got. So to three significant figures, that's 6980 joules per mole. The accepted range was 6650 to 8650. So part two now, the value for the pre-exponential factor A. So remember lin A, the y-intercept, is the lin of A. So I'm getting lin of A to be equal to 31.50. So you can see the y-intercept there, 31.50. So to work out A, we, do, we go E to the 31.5. So my pre-exponential factor comes out at that 4.79 times 10 to the 13. I'm just going to switch to a bigger graph to show you the range for this one. So the range for A obviously depends on the y-intercept. So the lowest y-intercept allowed was 31.2. So that would give you, your straight line graph would look like that. So that would give you an A value of 3.55 times 10 to the 13. The highest y-intercept allowed was 32.1. So that would mean that your straight line graph would look like that blue one there. And that would give you an A value of 8.73 times 10 to the 13. So like I said before, there's a lot of variation when it comes to graphs, um, so there'll always be a range allowed. So as long as you're within the accepted range, you'll be absolutely fine. 